Now, I've mentioned a couple of times now a particular material type called multi sub object. And what a multi sub object material allows you to do is it allows you to have multiple materials applied to one single object. Now, really, this is a little bit complex to sort of show you on something like this window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this box here and I'm going to right click and isolate it. And I'm going to convert it to an editable polygon. And I'm going to show you that the theory on this box and then I'm going to show you the practical on the window. So I'll open up my materials editor here. And you can see here what we've got is a standard material. And if I click on that standard material, that word standard, and I pick multi sub object, and then I click OK, I can either choose to keep that material as a sub material or discard it and have a new one in its place. Well, I'm not really bothered, so I'll keep it. And what I've got here is 10 standard materials. And if I look at my material map navigator, you can see we've got 10 standard materials. And if I click on any one of those, they all look the same. They're all bog standard materials. Okay. So I'll come back up to my top material here. And this is where I was saying that your material map navigator really does become very, very useful. And what I tend to do when I work with this type of material, first of all, is I don't worry too much about changing these materials, first of all, and assigning them. Because to be honest with you, I need to know which face of this object is going to have which material applied to it. So I'll start off by making colours. So I'm changing the colour, you can see here, of each one of these materials. Make it very blue. Make this uh, very light blue. And make this one very green. I'm obviously going to do too many here. Make this one very yellow. And this one I will make a deeper color of red. Because this one, although it's more than I need, will be a very strong orange. So I just need the red and the orange to be definitely different. And then I'll apply that. Now you can see here that we've got 10 materials. And if I set the number, I can set that number anything up to 1000. So I'm not going to worry about that for the moment, but I do have 10 materials listed and seven of them have got colors. And if I now look around this box, you can see that every single face has got a different color on it. So that means that every single face has got a different one of these standard materials. Okay. Now what's interesting is each one of these materials has an ID number. You can see it's there, it's number one. If I look at the yellow, that's the one in front of us, that's ID number six. So if I select by polygon that face, and I'll press F2 so that we just highlight the edges of it. And if I then, in my control panel, scroll down, you can see I've got set ID number here and select ID is number six. And if I select this face, it's number three. And number three corresponds to the blue material. So what I do, once I've applied my multi sub object material, before I even bother thinking about anything else, is I select all of the faces by element. There you go. And then down here, I set my material ID to one. Okay. And then I look around the object. Now I know that every single face on that cube is red. Okay? I can see that it's red because I'm looking around it. They all look red. Okay? So that means that every single face on this object has an ID of 1. What I'll now do is I'll go and I'll select this face here and this face here. And I'll make those an ID of 2. So you can see now we've got purple faces there. 
And if I select this face and this face, I can make those a number three. So that's blue. And if I select that face and that face, I could make those a number five. So you can see we can select various elements within these and then any one of these faces, so say for example our green, I can click on the green and I can turn it from a standard material to be an architectural material and that architectural material could very easily be clear glass. And you can see that in here in our map browser. You can also see it listed here as being architectural and the colour changing. And there you go. When we look at this now, we've got several different sets of standard materials and one architectural material. And if I render that, we should get this wonderfully strange result. Let's make this uh, environment a light blue colour, shall we? There we go, we get this sort of funny distortion through the glass there. So all very, very cool. Okay, so that's the theory behind all of that. Uh, let's take material number five and make it a standard material again, just so we don't get ourselves confused. And I do believe that this was a bright green colour. Okay, so now I want to take that knowledge and I would like to apply it to our window. So I'll select these three windows and I'll apply it. And so I can see things a little bit better, what I'm going to do is I'll take this one window and I'll isolate that. Let's just move this a little bit more into the middle. I'll just put this out of the way because of our screen resolution. And you'll notice, looking at this object here, uh, F4, the natural fact, it's already had its IDs changed for us, which is very, very useful. You can see the glass is definitely ID3. And I've got one material for the front or the outside of the window and one material for the back of the window. I've got one material for the outside of the frame and one material for the inside of the frame. So what that means is that you can actually have uh, a window which, say it's some um, UPVC window, it could be a brown from the outside and it could be painted white on the inside or it could be a white plastic on the inside. Entirely possible. Um, what I would tend to say though is uh, most of the time that you'll be doing windows like this they're going to be white. Uh, the white frame is going to be inside and out and also the, the, the munting in the middle is going to be white as well. So what I'm going to do in here is because these have obviously got all materials on them, I'm not going to bother changing the materials and going in and making this a, a editable polygon and all the rest of it. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drag this default material here and I'm going to drop it into material two and I'm going to make it an instance. Uh, and then I can do the same for material three. In actual fact, I don't even need to bother doing that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take this material one. I'll make it, first of all, uh, an architectural material. And I will make that plastic. And I'll make it uh, an off-white. There we go. And then I'll drag and I'll drop that as an instance. And I'll drag and I'll drop it in here as an instance. And I'll drag and I'll drop it in here as an instance. So you can see that everything apart from that blue is now white plastic. If I change one of the properties in here, and this is where I could look very, very silly, but if I make this green, for example, there you go, the whole thing goes green. Oof, that was close, wasn't it? Pull that back down to being white. I want that material there. And this one is going to be an architectural material. But this one is going to be clear glass. There you go, you see, so we've got clear glass window. So now when I exit my isolation mode, because I just applied this whole um, 
multi sub object material to all three windows, they've all got the same material IDs on them, and they've all got now white plastic as their frame and clear glass where the glass should be. So, really, that's how easy it can be using multi sub object material maps.